Welcome to the job interview experience. I'm a former executive recruiter, search firm owner, director of talent acquisition, and today the founder of Candidate Club Interview Training and your host of the job interview experience. Lauren Zander is the founder and CEO of Handle Group, an international corporate consulting and life coaching company. The Handle Method, which Lauren developed and taught at MIT, led to her working with 35 top universities across the country, as well as having a strong international presence. Lauren is the creator of Inner You, Learn to Human Better, an online coaching course that teaches the entirety of the Handle Method, which has been used by dozens of celebrities, CEOs, and entrepreneurs since 2004. She is the author of Maybe It's You, a no-nonsense practical manual that helps readers figure out not just what they want out of life, but how to actually get there. Lauren, thanks for joining us on the job interview experience. Thank you for having me. This is great. Can you give us a brief overview of your career and what led you to where you are today? Mm. So I'm 53 now. And uh, I started my coaching company when I was 29. And I had been in self-help basically since I was 22. And I did not study anything to do with it. My, my joke is that I was an environmental studies major. And I was save the trees, kill the people. I really was. And then I figured it out that uh, the trees... Uh, the only way to to save the trees is actually for the people to see the trees and what was wrong with the people that they weren't really seeing the trees. And so basically my 20s was when I figured out the right career to be in. And then um, I have been uh, working one-on-one when life coaching wasn't even a thing. Now it's a thing. Oh, yeah. <laughs> it was not a thing when I, like I was made fun of. Seriously, right? Like that's a life coach. Anyway, so I was there. I was like original gang on that. And then basically ever since then, I've been building and building and building and developed a method because I wanted it to be something I could teach or see if someone else could teach what I knew. So I wasn't just a unicorn who was good at something. I wanted to develop a methodology. And then that's when I expanded and built a coaching program and then franchised it. And so basically here I am. What's been one of the most difficult times of that career and how'd you get through it? I would say the most difficult time was when I had built the company to a point where other people wanted to lead it. And the role that I had been playing the whole time was it was time for it to change. And I basically had to stop doing everything I was doing and get really bored. And I'm a pretty good workaholic. And then I get a lot of joy or self-worth from the work I do. And so I had to like chill out. And that was pretty much a two-year period where I was chilling out and changing my responsibilities. And that was very, very difficult for me to have a lot more time on my hands. You've worked with a lot of people, I'm sure, that are at turning points in their careers Mm. or counseling with you on on making a change. And I think that's a a big mirror of our listeners. They either Mm. have a job or they're looking for a job. How do those situations differ between being employed and looking for a job or being unemployed and looking for a job? What impact or advantages or disadvantages are there? If I had my, like the power to tell a person what to do and how I would do it, I would tell you never to leave your job without another job. Like it is so much healthier of an experience to job hunt underground and sneak doing it, actually figure it out instead of quitting and then hoping you're great at finding a job or that it would happen quick because job hunting I'm sure, given how much you talk about job hunting, is pretty much in my book, one of the worst things for a person to have to like experience and keep their confidence. And I've been helping people 
for a long time. So hating your job and finding a new one is you've got a lot of confidence going for you as opposed to if you let go of that job that you're hating. A lot of times there's just bad work environments, even toxic work environments, mm -hmm. bad bosses. If you can, if you can find it within yourself to stick with it and look at it this way, if you start looking for a job, think of your employer as paying you to be on your job search. Now mm -hmm. you shouldn't be job searching 40 hours a week while you're clocked in, right? Because that won't end well for anybody. But for those hours after work that you're applying or those interviews that maybe you're taking a little PTO off for. The other time that you're getting paid for your job, that creates security for you. And it also creates a long runway and things don't go well when you have a short runway. And I think people are feeling that squeeze now, but mm. if you can remain employed during your job search, that confidence that Lauren is talking about plays a big part. It just empowers you financially, I think with your confidence and also the way that other employers that you apply to see you to be employed in those moments. Yeah, I have a. Uh... A nickname, I call it. I have two I have two rules I put in place when you sort out that you have had enough of the job you're in. One is tell people, there's a few things. You tell people you're leaving, not in the job you're in or even friends in the job you're in, but you tell someone that's important to you, like, I'm getting out of this job. So you feel like you committed to someone who will hold you accountable. So mention it go, I'm going to be out by, I'm doing everything I can. And you actually make a commitment. I'm going to put 10 hours every Sunday. I'm going to, like, you actually need to make a plan of action so that you're not putzing around and avoiding doing the work that you need to be doing. And call your current job your waitressing job, right? <laughs> like, it's your waitressing job. Don't give up your waitressing job. You need to waitress. Right. So you can fulfill on the acting or what the musician. Right. So you can fulfill on something you really love. And then the, I put in one other rule. You're not allowed to get lame at your job. You actually have to be more efficient than ever and better than ever and get it done even quicker. You're not allowed to be a jerk. Right. Because the other thing that happens is you start being a jerk and you could get yourself fired like they can smell you. Right. So pretend they know. So don't let them know and do a great job and commit to a plan. For our job seekers that are listening, this is a time of a lot of change. Mm -hmm. And that might be a new job title, a new industry, maybe a new location. Yeah. How can we take control and design our future a little bit instead of just applying and hoping for the best? Oh, you're going to have to work, right? It's actually, I have been helping people my entire career get jobs. And basically, whether you like me or not, I will tell you, there, you must, it has to be a job to get a job, which means you need to shower, get dressed, sit at a desk, make committed plans, organize your time, have someone be an accountability buddy so you're not doing it alone. You'll hate doing it alone. You'll feel like you're in a lonely vacuum. I tell people they have to exercise, like have another project in your life that you're working on that's important to you. It could, I don't care. I would literally make a person learn to sing a song and make a date where they have to publicly sing a song, right? Like don't be alone and commit to more than one project called finding a job and then commit to your actions and get in great shape. This is also when people will gain 15 pounds, right? And get unhappier. And then there's rules of things you can't do during your business day, right? You are not allowed to watch Netflix. Okay. You are not allowed. Like there's a list of things that will depress you over time if you keep doing them. And so I make a list of you're allowed to do and you're not allowed to do. When people do the bad things on your list, yeah. you lose purpose. When you wake up and scroll around Netflix and <laughs> reward yourself with a couple extra cookies or junk food or whatever, which I'm super guilty of myself. Mm -hmm. When you do those things, you lose self-respect and I think you lose purpose. Like you said, when you sing a song or maybe you have a project on your house or apartment, maybe it's painting a room, mm -hmm. you do these little things that you can be proud of. Is it? That comes through during job interviews, that confidence, that appreciation of what you're doing in your own life. When you're asked at the beginning of an interview what you did that day and you have to lie, 
that's a bad way to start. Not that it, not that that's a common interview question, but say it was. Say, hey, what'd you do this weekend? Say it's a Monday interview. Mm. And you just binge Netflix all weekend and ate junk food until you feel like crap. If mm. that's the truth, first of all, don't tell them. <laughs> but then you start off knowing that you're, you have to lie and you have to pretend to be someone that at least that weekend you, you weren't. Do you don't know that I teach no lying? I don't know that. Let's but dig I into do. that in a little bit. But you can <laughs> say, hey, I, I painted a room in my house. I went for a three mile walk. Yes, last week it was actually a two and a half mile walk. Now it's three. Next week it's going to be four. Mm-hmm. Not only do they find you more interesting, you get a, yes. you start glowing. And whatever it is that makes you proud, you mm-hmm. talk about that. You're humanizing yourself. You're showing that you're active. You're showing you're getting fresh air. And you listed a bunch of things, exercising all of this. It makes you a better person, but it also resonates. A good recruiter can, can tell when someone when you're asked, like, what'd you do this weekend? And they start kind of thinking, oh, crap, like, I did nothing. Right. That all shows through, whether it be your voice or the way that you say it or the pause or if you have to think really hard because you didn't do anything, it's yes. not the time to do it. Maybe after you get a job, you give yourself a, a staycation and you have fun. <laughs> but job seeking is urgent. And you're really your own reviewer and manager at that point, And you should be proud of what you do. I think. The other thing, everything you said is 100% accurate and people really need to listen to have a good weekend because it comes through in all your energy. But I, I actually also teach, one of my favorite teachers is a guy named, he's dead, Neville Goddard. And he teaches power of assumption. But in my methodology, I make you, I make people write visions, their dreams what they do want to have in an area of their life. And so the job dream has to be something you're in love with and read over and over and over and over again till you believe you have that job and what your life looks like. So you're visualizing and truly visualizing and practically believing that you have that job. So you also can't be vague like, I'll take any job, whatever it is. I would much rather a person absolutely believe they know which job they want and describe it and believe in it than and get a different job. It's not that you have to have that job and you'll reject other jobs, but you, you have to be in a state of belief in yourself and that you're getting what you want. And you have to be able to answer the question, what do you want? Let's dig into this no lying concept that you have. No. There's nothing that feels worse spiritually than having to lie, whether people know it or not, even the smallest lie, like, oh, it's great to see you. Even so I, in my book, and maybe it's you, I go over seven different ways humans lie. And when you're lying, you are not being true to yourself. It's basic, right? Like if I need to lie to you to make you like me to make you think I had a good weekend and to make like anytime I'm lying, you're more important than me. What you think is more important than what actually really happened. And I'm manipulating the situation, but I'm, I'm like, whatever I am, isn't it. And so there's these seven different ways people lie. And when we lie, we're not honoring what's true about us. Mm-hmm. And so I wouldn't tell a person to say, oh, I stayed home, ate cookies and watched Netflix. But I would say that, oh, this this weekend disappeared so quickly. What did you do? (laughs) I would turn it around so fast that you will like eat first. And I would also tell you that uh, getting the other person talking in an interviewing and being interested in the other person is one of the best tactics you will ever have if you don't want to talk about something. Don't lie. Don't answer. Don't even make up something. (laughs) Just switch subjects, please. And and along with that, most recruiters are really salespeople, and recruiters love talking about themselves. So Mm. give them a chance. It probably (laughs) won't be very interesting, but uh, you couldn't be more right that that turning that turning that question around and, and giving a recruiter to brag about whatever dumb stuff they did their weekend, uh, it's a good thing to do. E- even if you had a great weekend, it's actually, I think it's a, a way to demonstrate humility that this isn't all about me. Also, I'd like to hear about you. 
Yes. Being interested in an interview, no matter where you are, is actually a person who cares and is, and really care. That's like the, I, I would say that that is the, I have been hiring people my whole career and helping people hire people their whole career. And what you're looking for is the person you actually felt most connected to or wanted to see again. It isn't even the person that could do the best job at the job. It's better have the ability, better like you, right? And likability comes through, through intimacy and being connected and care. Yep. During an interview, I, I encourage listeners not to ask too many questions, right? Don't start asking questions about the company. Don't start digging into things. At the end of the interview, make time for a couple questions. But if you, especially early in your interview, if you ask a recruiter questions about themselves and you, you ask them, they tell you about their, what they did that weekend. And you say, oh, tell me like what, oh, what kind of dog, you walked your dog, what kind of dog do you have? You will never get yourself in trouble diverting, it, diverting that conversation. The recruiter hopefully will correct course and get back to the interview. But if you can quote unquote waste three, five minutes of the interview, actually caring and getting to know them, talking about their dog, asking questions about their walk that they went on to they went on when you humanize things like that. And mm -hmm. so all of a sudden the recruiter after her three or five minutes says, that person's really fun to talk to, which secretly is because you ask them questions. They talked about themselves. Mm -hmm. I think that puts you leagues ahead of the other person that just gave yes, no questions about themselves and had a quick mm -hmm. interview. I will, I, I have that you, point. You want another trick? I have another trick. These are good tricks. Liking the person that you're about to go talk to. Making yourself like them is like, oh, look at his nice shirt. Look at his chin. He has a great chin. So if you want to have great energy and you want the other person to feel connected to you, start listing in your head why you like them. Start finding why you like them. It actually is an energy and it comes off of you. So if you're in your head and you're like, I hope they like me. Right. And it's all about you or what should I say or if, if the energy's going the other way and you're just in fear, that never comes off. That's so. a great idea. That's Thank a you. great idea. <laughs> so let, let's pretend that there's just one person listening to our conversation. So, yes. hey, hey, listener, that's you. <laughs> Lauren, can you help our listener hone in on what they love to do? What's the process to mm -hmm. figuring that out? So... Everyone really first just get that we love, that there's things we love to do. And there's things you don't know you love to do that you could learn that you love to do. So there's, there's an endless supply. So first just get that you don't already always know yourself and that there's like, I started painting in my forties. Okay. So one, just keep an open, like, unless you've tried new things and keep trying new things, you have no idea you could fall in love with something new. So that's one side of the premise. And the other is that um, when I am helping someone figure out what they love to do, I give them this exercise. It's pretty funny. Um, and they have to write a new job that they would do every day and send it to someone. So I do a 30-day exercise of, I don't care, pick it. Oh, you're sending me something. And you not only do you tell me what you're doing, you have to tell me why you would be great at it, and why you pick that thing. And it helps a person lighten up. Like, could you just get, there's a lot of jobs in the world and that maybe you'd be good at a lot. And it's not because you're going to go try and get a truck driver's job, but it's like, I love driving and I always wanted to know how to drive one of those 18 million. Like it, it could be anything that you've ever been curious about. I love that. It's like for <laughs> me, I, one of my things, would be, I'd be a, a state park patrol, whatever the term would be, forest. Oh, that's for me, that would, that would be heaven. And I have reasons I'd be good at. Or uh, for me, a movie director has probably been my, my oh. dream job most of my life. Why would yes. I be good at it? Why, why wouldn't I be? Would I, dig it, would I dig into that as well? No, you don't need to worry about that. Okay. It's, it's more, we, so humans, scientifically, over 80% of our thoughts are negative. No shit. That's so sad, right? So we are always on the side 
of, uh uh-oh, oh no, what's wrong? It's not turning out. What if? Right? So we're always on the wrong side of the tracks of our own self-respect and love. So when you're letting yourself wonder something you'd be great at, let yourself just go after that alone, right? That that you're still going to come up with what's wrong with you. Yeah, you don't have to work at that. That's like not what we have to work at. We're, we're professionals at that. So we have this list of 30, 31 different jobs that we've put together over a month. And for listeners yeah. that, that actually do this, whether it be for a week or if you stick with it through a month, what do we do with this information? How do we assess it once we have this list? So what I have done is then after a person really takes this thing seriously, they don't have to not pick the same job twice. So you don't have to come up with 30 different ones, but unless you're dying to keep thinking about one of the ones you wrote down and sent, you can repeat, you can start to repeat only if you love them. So then at the end of the month, you will take all the lists that you have And you will put a one, two, or a three next to it. One, you're in love with it. Two, you're like, me. Three, you're like, nah, never, right? And it's really just on preferences. And so then you end up with a few. And then you have your one list, right? I don't care about your twos. I'm sorry. They're they're, they're a list. And so we take the list of ones and I make you dig into whatever those are. And then you take the ones really seriously. And then you start to see if there's a career there or something different there or some way to incorporate that into your life. It really, it's, it's actually a, a more spiritual experience if you're really thinking about it and doing it because we, we actually, and I also recommend people go exercise. Like this is something you answer. I do this other thing. I ask for a playlist. I make people put together a playlist during the time that they're hunting for a job because it's it's emotional and I want it to be like, what do you need? The Eye of the Tiger, Eminem's Eight Miles. Like, what's what's your song? Like, what song will get you through it combined with what do you really wish you were able to do? And those are the 30 days of like, you know what I wish I could do? No, what? And so rather than thinking yourself, loser, right? This transition is sacred and you matter and it's getting you somewhere. Where is it getting you? So for our listeners, it's pretty well split between folks that are currently employed and are looking to get to the next step in their career. Mm-hmm. And then those that they've, they've recently lost a job or mm-hmm. they're not in a job, which mm-hmm. like you said earlier, it's about the worst place to be. Yeah. Do you have one last action item that we can send them off with for the rest of the week that they can do to put themselves in a better position, like you say, whether it be spiritually, professionally, Mm. in their job search? What what can we do? What would you advise? Pay it forward. Do a favor for someone else, right? Like do, do things you can do, right? Make connections. Don't go, don't disappear, right? Be in touch with your friends, your family, like three phone calls a day and make a difference. Like if you can, oh, I'll get you a babysitter or I'll find you that or hey, is there anything you need from me? Keep yourself feeling helpful and mean it, right? And don't disappear from your community. You have a community and they also will help you, right? If you're like, I'm looking for a job. Do you know anything big? Like anything I should do, anything I could do for you, right? Just, and pay it forward, which is do things for people. Don't disappear. I think that's really Mm going to resonate with listeners. Don't disappear. I think a lot of people feel that way during their job search. They feel alone. You're not alone. Like Lauren said, you have a community. Don't go down without shooting up a flare. And a lot of people, they just don't know where you're at and they're busy, but reaching out and especially being helpful, I think gives us this feeling of purpose and being able to help other people. What else is there in life? Obviously we have our own careers to focus on, but when we have loved ones and and we can do a little thing for them, maybe it's just getting lunch with a parent or a friend or or someone that you've been meaning to get together with for a while and haven't. That's really good advice. And 
it gets you out of the cycle because that's what happens with, with job seekers when you're at home and you've got this extra time. It gets easy to get stuck in that loop. Yes. Lauren, where should listeners connect with you to learn more about your methods and to learn more from you? So the Handel Group, handelgroup.com is my website. And Inner You is like if you plug in Inner You or Lauren Zander, Lauren Handel Zander or Handel Group, you will find me. And I'm on Instagram in lots of different places and LinkedIn. I'm pretty much everywhere. Um, do you have, we can post it maybe? Yeah, we'll put all those links in this episode's description. And remind <laughs> me of the name of your book. Because I, I think people are going to want to. Oh, that that's a good well. idea. That's a good idea. Maybe it's you. Cut the crap, face your fears, love your life. Lauren, thanks so much for joining us <laughs> for your insight, not just on the immediate job search, but also on us and what we can do to be better people and, and have a more successful career. You're great. It's really nice to have met you and hear how you're coaching everybody on uh, their job search. Much appreciated. Hope to have you back sometime soon. Yeah.